Yo, what up guys? It's Brock. Welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be a cool video, at least I hope. I'm breaking down a full spec ad that I shot for Brevity, the backpack company. They did not ask me to shoot a commercial. They did send the bag over for free, but they just kind of expected a what's in my bag type video. And I decided that I wanted to shoot a full spec for the bag itself and more of a lifestyle commercial. So I shot a 60 second spot and I'm going to fully break down the shot list, how I accomplished these shots, the color grade and the sound design. Hopefully this video will be helpful and informative and it may be a long one so you might want to go grab a drink or snack because I plan to break down shot by shot and then all the sound design that I did for this project along with the color grade itself. But before we do any of that I am going to be giving away this brevity backpack so make sure that you stay tuned for the end of the video so you can see exactly how to enter that giveaway. But with all that out of the way let's hop over to the computer and get this breakdown going. Before we jump into the shots, the dimensions of this project is actually 3600 by 2160. So it's basically the same height as a 4K timeline, but it's a little less wide. And I kind of wanted to lean into the film emulation, a little bit more of the vintage kind of nostalgic feel. So that's why I wanted a little bit of more of a four by three aspect ratio. And that's kind of what this gives. I think it looks really cool for the project. I like the vibe of it. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the project dimensions to begin with. And what I was kind of framing within my mind when shooting was was that that four by three aspect ratio all right so let's go shot by shot and kind of look at my thought process behind why i was doing what i was doing on top of how i was able to get some of these shots so starting with this opening shot here again it's kind of a why we're setting location we have uh my man rj here my friend rj he is walking out of the house about to go on a photo shoot that was kind of the story and basically there's two storylines to this video there's rj my friend going shooting downtown in the city and then I actually had my dad who was on uh, the mini bike going in the woods, taking some photos of nature, that kind of thing. One was a digital camera, one was a film camera. I kind of wanted to highlight two different stories, both of them using the brevity camera bag. So that was kind of the idea. Um, and we start off here with RJ. And the whole idea for this video was to basically ping pong back and forth between the two storylines. So, for example, when RJ was walking out of the house, I have dad rolling the mini bike out. When RJ's driving, I have dad driving the mini bike. Like I wanted to kind of mirror their stories while also them being different. So, and we kind of flip back and forth between those. You'll see that if you watch the full thing. I'm gonna kind of break that down here. So we started off with this opening shot here. RJ walking out the house. Then we cut to the bag itself. Then we're ping pong into my dad here. So basically with this first shot, I wanted to kind of set location like he's walking out the house. And then as he swings the bag up, I'm thinking story, right? So what would the next action would be it would make sense for us to be here. Like he just threw the bag on his shoulder and now he's walking to the car. And again, the focus is kind of the bag here. You're going to see some match cuts in this video when I switch back and forth. The idea is to kind of focus the bag is almost the main character uh, to these two main storylines is basically the best way I can describe it. Let me cut here. This is supposed to kind of mirror the idea, him rolling the bike out, him walking out the house. It's not exactly the same frame or composition because just the way the location was, I couldn't really do that. But you get the same idea and the same effect is had. You kind of get the same idea with the same effect with him getting on the bike with the bag on his back. And then what I do here is I use the fake ignition of the bike itself. Um, the bike doesn't actually start like this. It's a pull start. But in this situation, it works. I have him flip the ignition switch to on right on the snare hit on the music itself as the music kind of ramps up and it kind of signifies the, 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 the day beginning, the journey beginning as the music kind of picks up. And then we cut to him riding on the bike. These shots were actually trickier than I thought they would be. There's two here. I'll play them both and we can kind of talk about it. Right, so these two, I actually used the C70 on everything on this project except for these two shots. Here, I actually used my R6 Mark II just because I needed something smaller. So I was able to take this, the super clamp from Manfrotto and a big friction arm, and I was able to mount the camera on the handlebars and this back rack to kind of get these effects. What made it difficult was just the vibrations of the bike itself. You know, these smaller engine kind of you know, dirt bikes and things like that, they vibrate a lot. And the fact that the bike doesn't have any rear suspension, <laughs> it's only got shocks on the front. So every bump was noticeable. Every shake was noticeable, but I think it kind of works and it lends itself to the nature of the project. I kind of wanted more very natural, organic feel like in the moment. That was kind of the idea behind the color grade and the shots themselves. So it didn't really feel too out of place. The imperfection kind of leaned into the whole idea anyway. But it still made it challenging. In hindsight, I probably would have turned 
the IBIS off on the R6. I didn't really notice it in the moment, but I realized after the fact because I didn't have a big monitor on it. Overall, I think these shots are cool in context. The idea again here is to focus on the bag itself. And I think it turned out really cool. I really like these shots. I think it feels immersive and it kind of puts you in the scene more so. And then we cut to these shots with RJ driving in the car. What made these challenging was the fact that I have really tinted windows on my, my Forerunner. And so the contrast between the inside and the outside was even greater than it would normally be. So I had to really, really get the exposure right. I had to use a polarizer, obviously, which you should use anyway. But on top of that, just the contrast in light and dark, it was kind of hard to get the exposure right. I tried to rig some lights up, but it just didn't look natural. Um, so I think it turned out pretty good overall. I actually used a camera mount I found online. It's about 80 bucks. It wasn't that expensive and it worked great. It, was able to hold the C70. I had a safety tether, you can see in these pictures here, and it actually worked really well. I was pleased with this setup. The vibrations can be a little gnarly with something like this, but as long as you're on a fairly smooth road, you won't have any issues. You just have to pick your shots right. Um, but I think these contrasting shots looked really cool. And again, they both feel kind of natural, organic, and with the film kind of emulation look on the color grade, it really works. Again, focusing on the bag as many spots as possible. I didn't want this video to be like features of the camera bag, even though it is a great camera bag. I'm impressed by it. I like it a lot. I really wanted to focus more on the lifestyle aspect of it. The fact that it is stylish, it's portable. You could take it wherever you go, no matter who you are. And so that was kind of the idea here. But there are some moments where I do, you know, show off the pockets of the bag or different functionalities in subtle ways. And that's kind of what I was doing here opens the camera bag, then we cut back to uh, my dad's scene on the bike. And I like this shot right here a lot. This was kind of like a medium tight. This one I didn't love um, as much, but this one I really enjoyed. I don't know, I just thought it looked nice. I like the framing, I like the composition, this little pocket in the woods here. And it kind of contrasts the city nicely with what RJ was doing in his scene. And this, this storyline, uh, I don't know, I just thought it was cool. And then again, we're kind of doing what RJ did, the mirror thing happening the whole time. I'm thinking that as I'm doing it. Going into this, I had some ideas where I knew I wanted to be my big match cut, my big transition shots. And you'll see those um, as they happen. But these filler shots are just kind of trying to mirror the actions as much as possible. Again, pulling out the camera there, same kind of thing RJ did. And then we're getting into actually taking the photos. So that's kind of what this next little segment is here. These are all real simple handheld shots. This is about to be a match cut where you see here to RJ, kind of the same idea. Obviously, this is pretty straightforward, but I wanted, you know, bag on someone's back and then cut to RJ. It's not like a super, super tight match cut, but you get the idea. And with the sound effects and the whooshes and all the things that go along with that, it helps sell that a lot more. If you don't have a perfectly lined up match cut, it'll kind of get the same point across. Again, just kind of a montage vibe going on here. Just different different shots of everybody taking photos in each of their different situations. So that's kind of what this segment is here. And this was the big match cut that I knew I wanted to get from the beginning. Um, you guys have probably seen a similar shot like this. I really like these fixed perspective shots. That's kind of what I call them in my mind. Um, so I have RJ with the Canon R8 here. And then at the top of when he's kind of getting lifting the camera up to his face, I have a match cut dad with this old Nikon film camera that I have. Um, and I really like this shot. It's a great way to transition between the two storylines. And to do this, I basically built this rig with 15 millimeter rods. And then I had a cheese plate on one end where I mounted the camera that I was shooting. So in this case, the R8 and the Nikon. And then I had my C70 on a tripod head on the other end of this setup. So it was just kind of long double ended setup. And I was able to really lock into the camera that I was shooting. And then all I had them do was basically just grab their hands around the camera and I would just move with them as they completed the action. You can kind of see some photos here of what that rig actually looks like. Worked really well. It was simple. And I just used stuff I had laying around the crib. A lot of times you can kind of get creative with stuff like this and really come up with some interesting ideas of how to how to pull off shots like this. And I think this one translated really well. And this is my ending shot here. I kind of knew I want to do something like this where we've seen these type of shots before. I knew I wanted to have the focus again be the bag. So I had RJ come in, drop it down, and then I had my dad do the same shot basically um, in his scene, different day. And I was able to match cut these back and forth. And I really like this ping pong at the end of the video. It kind of puts even more emphasis on this mirror of the storylines that I was going for the whole time. And I'm switching back faster in a couple times in a row and it really sells it. And I just, I don't know, I, I like the way this, this ended.
and then we cut to logo. And honestly, what really sells a lot of this is the sound design itself. And you'll see that in a minute when I kind of break that down in really more detail within the project itself. But for this, I just kind of wanted to highlight the shots themselves and my thought process behind them. And this was kind of just to give you guys an insight of the storytelling aspect of stuff like this and the forethought that it takes. Um, and sometimes where I maybe I could have done better and there's definitely shots. Some of these filler shots I think could have been more structured and more laid out. And I think they probably would have looked better. But overall, I was pretty pleased with it for the resources I had. So now I'm going to jump to the project file itself and kind of break down the color grade for you guys and show you exactly what I did here to get this look. So now I will quickly touch on the color grade real fast um, on this one. I did use Dehancer um, to get a film grain kind of look on this one, film emulation. Basically what I did on this one was I had my base LUT conversion here. So this is my uh, my C log two LUTs um, dropped on the C seventy here, and then a little bit of a color adjustment, grade adjustment, and then what I did on the adjustment layer was I used Dehancer first. This is without Dehancer here. Uh, this is Dehancer on, and all I'm doing here is I'm really not changing colors too much. I'm just trying to focus on the the film emulation part itself, and then from there I use one of my finishing LUTs, the warm browns, at about sixty percent. Okay, and that got me to this point, but it was a little bit green and cool, so I used a color wheels to kind of warm everything up a little bit, and that was the final look. Like if you take away the dehancer, the finishing LUT, and the adjustments, that's what you get out of camera, more of like a base Rec 709, and then that's with the adjustments. Because I wanted this to be kind of warm, filmic, uh, a little bit kind of nostalgic feel almost, uh, while also being... Uh, just very natural. I didn't want it to feel like crazy uh, color colored, and so I feel like it still looks and feels pretty natural. It feels just like a warm day. Now, in terms of Dehancer itself, I don't use Dehancer as a Rec. 709 like conversion. Uh, I already I do all that with my own LUTs, and then I come in with Dehancer and just kind of add the film looks. Um, and in this case, I use the Fuji Color Pro 400H film profile. And then I believe, let me see, yeah, on the grain I went I went custom. I didn't uh, do anything because I didn't want it to be overly grainy. Um, I think some of the stock profiles can be a little bit much. So I just kind of tweaked the amount. And then I don't believe I enabled anything else. Yeah, I don't have like the bloom or the halation enabled. Um, I'm just, I, I don't know. I, I didn't want it to be crazy stylized. I just wanted it to have a vintagey feel. Um, so that was kind of the idea. I didn't go too crazy, but you can go crazy with, with the answer. The answer is cool. Before we keep going and jump into the sound design part of this breakdown, I want to talk about the giveaway and how you can enter. I'm deciding to give away this brevity backpack. It's a fantastic backpack. It's stylish. It looks good. It does not look like a camera bag, which I really love, but you can actually hold a surprising amount of gear, including a full 16 inch laptop. It's a great backpack. Brevity's not paying me to say this. I just genuinely think so. And because we hit 2000 subscribers a while back, I thought it'd be a great way for me to give back to you guys for all of your support so i'm going to be giving this bag away to enter all you need to do is to comment on this video make sure that you're subscribed and follow me on instagram if you comment on this video i want you to give me your favorite shot from this project and maybe something that you learned it was helpful for you from this video and you will be entered to win i will be reaching out to you on instagram you're gonna have two weeks to make sure that you're entered and follow me on instagram and subscribe to the channel and drop your comment below and you'll be entered with a chance i will ship it out to you i'm gonna use a random comment picker and pick someone in about two weeks in the next video i will announce the winner there and Expect a DM on Instagram to let you know that you did indeed win. And I'm excited to be able to give this away to you guys. So the rules are simple. Subscribe to the channel. Drop a comment below your favorite shot from this video or something that you learned. And follow me on Instagram and you will be entered to win. And if you don't win the backpack or you decide you want to purchase it in general, there is an affiliate link below in the description. I do make a small commission off the sales of the backpack, but it doesn't cost you any extra money. And it is a great way to support the channel. I also have all of my own custom LUTs for C-Log 2, C-Log 3, and finishing LUTs that work with any camera camera for sale as well and I have a gear store on my Cellify store where I'm offloading some of my lenses and lights that I'm not really using these days so you may get a great deal on a new lens or a monitor or a light so go check that out as well these are all just great ways to support the channel and help me to continue to do what I do and hopefully provide you with inspiring and informative and helpful videos that you can learn something from so with all that being said all the shameless plugs out of the way let's jump into the sound design of this project now in terms of sound here I'm going to kill the music track for this one um, and we're going to kind of talk about just the sound design. Now, to me with sound design, my approach is this. I want it to feel real. I want it to feel natural. But then there's also what I call enhancements beyond natural, right? And you're going to kind of figure out which is which. Um, most of these sounds, like all the engine sounds and all the things like that, um, 
I found through different resources through like Art List and Ep- Epidemic Sound. And there's a company called Lens Distortions, which is a great website. If you've never heard of them, they're fantastic. And so that's kind of what I did. It's a lot about creating atmosphere, building the environment. And so let's play this without uh, without the music and just see what it feels like. I've actually never done this, so <laughs> it might sound weird. So here we go. All right, so like, actually sounds pretty good. I'm actually kind of impressed. Like, even in this shot, this opener shot, for example, I have a lot going on here. Like, I have basic, like, you know, just neighborhood ambience. Like, you know, bugs kind of chirping, dogs barking in the background, people cutting grass, like lawnmowers running, like all the things. And then I have some footstep sounds that, if you actually listen, aren't even lined up right, which is kind of hilarious. But with the music, it kind of hides some of that. Like, they're not actually timed up properly on this first shot. And, you know... I wanted to kind of sell it a little bit. They're subtle. Like, you probably can't even really hear it with the music involved. And then you cut to this, this shot where it gets louder. I'm closer to him. Um, so I wanted, you know, to get more of like a, uh, as the camera moves closer, it's all about the camera's perspective to the shot. So you want to make sure it makes sense in terms of how loud certain things are. So those footsteps are louder. And then I cued this beep, which is actually, weirdly enough, I couldn't find a car beeping sound that I liked, so I actually used a microwave um, <laughs> and a microwave sound, and then uh, basically doubled it, and then uh, created my own thing. So that's what this is here um, to act like he's unlocking the car uh, that he's walking towards. And there's, you know, a lot of like texture, fabric moving sounds, just to kind of emulate like the jacket rustling, the bag moving, and in context with the music, it 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 works. Um, and so that's kind of what that is. And then we cut to this next shot. And I tried to find something like dirt, kind of something being moved on dirt. So that's what this kind of uh, dirt labeled sound is here. Um, and then I have some birds and some, you know, chirping and different things like that. Um, and, you know, it kind of does a good job. And then this whoosh sound kind of gets us transitioned to this shot, um, the different storylines. So I, every time I transition from the storylines, I use that whoosh sound. You'll notice that. Honestly, here that sold the kind of the leg like just it doesn't really make sense if you hear it without this is one of those ones that doesn't sound as good without the music but it it simulates like you know him getting on the bike the the birds are still chirping and then here we got a click sound and i found this this ducati mic uh basically motorcycle like engine starting and then this other engine sound i like so i kind of morph them together and here you can kind of hear the difference when they cut the other one cuts in, right? And as you, and I will play turn the music on for this one. You can actually hear I intentionally lined up the click of the the button being pressed with this snare hit on the track. Right. Just the motorbike sounds. Right. And then so this one, I actually use a little bit of the camera audio on this one here because I wanted the perspective shift. So I mixed in a little bit of the camera capturing the actual engine of the bike. To get the perspective shift because the camera was in front of the exhaust before and now it's behind it so i wanted to kind of sell that so you can actually hear the wind rustling a little bit on the mic and then we transition again another whoosh here um the transitions to the car shot so everything in this in this one is fake all the sound is fake um there's actually like a tesla electric tesla sound here that kind of is more of a here i'll solo it It just kind of has that that like inside of a car sound. So in this shot that I have with RJ, there's there's this car coming by, and I'm gonna solo this track here. And I wanted to simulate like this truck passing, right, as we drive by it, and it drives by us. So I kind of found this this car passing like passing you sound already. And then what I did, I came in here to the audio settings and hit pan, and then went to basic surround. And basically what I did is I keyframed the position. So like. When you're editing stuff like this, this dot here it simulates where the focus of the sound is, and then it shows you what it will look like, where the sound's coming from, and the directions it's coming from. So what I did is you can see the watch the movement of it. I keyframed it as the truck passes, the perspective of the audio shifts. So it helps sell that. If you got headphones on or something that sells it, you'll be able to hear it more. But it kind of moves from the back of your head a little bit forward, but still stays on this this right side. 
and it just kind of helps sell that effect. And then if you unsolo this and add in all the rest of the car sounds, it sounds it sounds exactly like it would sound. This shot here, car door closing, that's simple. Um, again, just city ambience is kind of the idea. So we're trying to find, you know, what it would be like if you were in a city. So that's kind of what I have going on here. You know, the bag, again, engine sounds. Cut to this one. Again, perspective shifts, um, very important. And then like the bag rustling sounds and things like that. That's always hard to do, um, find the right thing. So again, use the music to your advantage. Hide the little imperfections in terms of what does it perfectly line up with the visual. But you just want to make sure that when you watch it, is it believable? Sound design is basically lying to people uh, and trying to manipulate them into and gaslighting them into thinking that what they're hearing is real. And I'll be honest, a lot of what I'm doing on these tracks is I'm, I'm EQing things to make it sound better, make it sound right, what I don't like and what I do like. So like, if you take this, this engine sound right, and take the EQ off, if you can hear the difference, this is way better, it's less, less harsh, and it's just a better quality sound. So you gotta use the EQ to your advantage, use that pan tool to your advantage to help sell things. And sometimes like, if I have two ambience tracks, like if I have two different city ambience, I'll pan one a little left, one a little right, just to separate everything and make it feel more immersive. Those are always tricks you can do. And then camera shutter, and this ambience, these birds are going the whole time. And then we have another transition, and we transition back to the city. So I went from birds to city ambience. Cars in the background. And then this one was more of a longer ramp up. I wanted a bigger pan, uh, I wanted a bigger whoosh on this one. So you can hear there's like a longer, uh, like a bassier kind of build up to this transition with the cameras. And then the shutter sound. And I try to find more of like a film camera style shutter to match the camera. Cause obviously this is more digital, this one is, versus the Nikon. And so that was a the transition there, more engine sounds. Again, we transitioned uh, to RJ again, so Another whoosh. And then for this last shot here, we just kind of walking sets in the back down. Again, another transition to to dad. So we I have the, the whoosh sound. Back and forth. What I wanted to happen at the end was when I'm cutting back and forth multiple times and the music's kind of down is I wanted you to be able to hear more of the environment and just hear the contrast. And again, highlight what we've been doing throughout the whole film so far is we've been cutting back and forth between these two storylines. Like in context, city sounds, nature, and then we logo. And that's it, that's the breakdown. Hopefully this video was very helpful for you. I enjoyed making it, I enjoyed making this project in general. It was a fun thing to just practice your skills and always work to try to get better, so I'm excited about that. As always, I thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you enter the giveaway, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment below, and follow me on Instagram, and you will be entered to win. I appreciate you, I will catch you all in the next one.